What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G to help you get more comfortable using it. Now as always, if you end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. To do this, go to settings. Then from here, go to wallpaper and style. So right here. From here, go to change wallpapers. And from here, you can choose between your own photos or the photos already on the phone. So for this, we're going to do this one. It'll give you a preview of your home screen and your lock screen. From here, hit next. From here, hit done. And as you can see, the wallpaper has been changed. Now that was easy enough but I'm gonna show you an even quicker way to change your wallpaper and also access some additional home screen settings. So for this, all you have to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen, so like this. In this menu is gonna show up. From here, you can change your wallpaper, customize your theme, add and remove widgets, and access additional home screen settings. So definitely cool if you're setting up your phone for the first time, it does make things a lot more convenient. Now we're going to take a quick look at the sound menu. Now to get to this, you can technically go to settings, but a faster, easier way to do it is by simply pressing either volume key, so like this. Then from here, hit these dots. And from here, hit the settings icon. Hit this button right here. And this is the main sound menu. So as you can see, we are in sound right now, so if you have a ringtone or anything like that, it'll basically go off as normal. Keep in mind, by default, it's not going to vibrate and make sound at the same time, but you can turn it on so it does that. And then of course, we got vibrate and mute. Pretty standard. Under this, you can change the ringtone. So if we go here, we got the default, lots of different customs. And if you want to add your own, hit the plus icon right here, and you can choose a file. Under this, we got the notification sound, so pretty much the same thing. If we go here, Again, we got the default and lots of presets too. Then from here, if we go to system sound, up here you can change the volume, system sound theme, so a few different options. And in addition to this, there are several different sounds you can turn on and off. The bottom four will be on by default, but of course you can set this up however you want. Then from here, if we go to volume, this is where we were when we first got to the sound menu. So pretty straightforward, ringtone, media, notifications, system. You can control everything here and keep in mind by default, the volume keys will control the media sound. Under this, we got call vibration and notification vibration, system vibration. So if we go here, by default, it is going to vibrate for a few different things, but you can turn this off and you can also change the intensity. But in general, as you can probably tell, the sound menu does have a lot of different things to play around with. Now I'm going to show you how to control which apps can send you notifications. Now as you get more and more apps, most of them will be sending you notifications, which on one hand can be useful in certain situations, but if you have like a bunch of different apps like store apps for example, the notifications can definitely get to be a little much. So I'm going to show you how to manage this. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to settings. Then from here, go to notifications. Then from here, go to app notifications. So in this menu, you're going to see all the apps on your phone, including the ones that are pre-installed. And to turn off notifications for anything, simply toggle it off, and that's pretty much it. But keep in mind there are certain things you can't turn them off for, but don't worry, those are really just system things, which in general are not going to be sending you notifications anyway. So for the most part, if you do have a bunch of different apps and they're all sending you notifications, you can deal with pretty much anything from here. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen lock. Now by default on this phone, the screen lock is a pin, so as you can see right here. And I also have the fingerprint scanner on. So definitely pretty cool, but I'm going to show you a couple different options. To get to these, go to settings. Then from here, go to security. So right here, security and privacy. From this menu, go to lock screen. From here, go to screen lock. Enter your current PIN, and as you can see, you can choose between PIN, password, pattern, swipe, or none. Keep in mind that none and swipe are pretty much no security. The only real difference between the two is that with none, you don't even get a lock screen at all. Whereas with swipe, you at least get a little something, but in general, I personally really don't recommend these. Pattern is pretty straightforward. PIN is basically the industry standard, and if you want really high security, you can always use a password. In addition to this, as you can see at the bottom, under biometrics, you can enable or disable fingerprints and face unlock from here. But that being said, when you're setting up the face unlock or the fingerprint scanner for the first time, there is a slightly different spot you're going to want to go to. So from this menu, if we go back to the main security menu, from here, go down to biometrics, so right here, and as you can see here, you can register your face and add fingerprints. 
Now I'm going to show you how to change your system navigation. Now with this phone, like pretty much every Samsung phone, at the bottom here, we got the typical three button navigation you usually see in an Android phone, but we can customize this. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. And from this menu, go to where it says navigation bar. So right here. So as you can see, again, by default, we will have the buttons, and you can also change the order. So right now, the recent apps is on the left, and the back button is on the right, but you can switch them around. And then in addition to this, we can also use what's called swipe gestures. So if we go here, with gesture navigation, as you can see, instead of three buttons, the navigation bar has this one line here, but in case you've never used gesture navigation before, let me show you how it works. So to go home, swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up. And then to go back, swipe from the side. In addition to this, if we go to more options, you can also change the sensitivity. And by default, there is a bit of a shortcut to open the assistant. So if you just swipe up like this, there we go, so pretty cool. But if you wanna turn this off, you always can. And then finally, if you want something that's maybe a bit of a hybrid between gesture navigation and button navigation, you can also use swipe from the bottom, which it basically works the same as button navigation, but instead of buttons, there are these little lines here. So basically, if you want button navigation, but you don't want the actual buttons showing here, so pretty cool. To go to your recent apps, of course, swipe up on the left. To go home, swipe on the middle. And to go back, swipe on the right. So in general, definitely a few different options here. And oh, one more thing, in case you're wondering, button navigation does have an assistant shortcut too. All you have to do is press and hold on the home button, and it's gonna open right up. Now I'm gonna show you how to hide an app. So this is useful for stuff like the Galaxy Store, for example, where you might not ever use it, but you can't delete it either. So to do this, we're gonna go to the menu I showed you in the very beginning. So again, press and hold your finger on a blank spot on the home screen, like this. From here, go to settings, and then from here, go to the hide app section. So right here, this is going to show you all the apps on your phone. So for example, if I want to hide the Galaxy Store, tap on it right here. Then at the top, it's going to show you everything you have hidden. When you're done, hit done. And now if we go back to the home screen, that app is no longer here. So if we look in the app drawer, it's not here either. So definitely pretty cool. And if you hide something, but then you want to unhide it, go back to the same menu. And then from here, again, everything you have hidden is going to be right here at the top, so pretty convenient. Tap on it, hit done, and it will be back. But keep in mind, if you hide something that's already on your home screen, it's not going to go right back there. You will have to go get it in the app drawer, so right here. And there we go. Now I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G. So definitely a real simple feature. All you have to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind, you don't actually have to hold the buttons, just press them real quick. So like this. And there we go. You can share it, edit it, whatever you want to do, and it will be saved right to your photos. Now I'm going to show you how to edit your quick menu. Now in case you don't know what it is, the quick menu is basically a little menu at the top that gives you access to a bunch of different features. So to get to it, swipe down twice from the top. So one, two, and this is the quick menu. As you can see, there are a bunch of different things on here, but you can customize it. To do this, hit this plus right here. So again, on the second page, this up here is going to show you everything you can add. And if you want to remove something, press and hold. So let's take modes out of here, drag it to the top. And then if you want to add something, do the same thing. There we go. When you're done, hit done. Or if you want to reset it, hit reset. And there we go. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen timeout time. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. And then from here, screen timeout is right here. And as you can see, you can set it as short as 15 seconds or as long as 10 minutes. So we definitely got some flexibility here, but keep in mind, if you set a really long screen timeout time, which honestly 10 minutes isn't that bad, but I feel like for most people it still is pretty unnecessary because in general, even if you're consuming a lot of content, for stuff like videos, for example, the screen's not gonna fall asleep. But if you're doing maybe reading or something like that and you don't wanna tap on your screen a lot, then this could make sense. But there is another option. So if you wanna keep your screen on whenever you're using it, but you don't want to have to set a 10 minute screen timeout time, what you can do is go back to the main settings menu. So again, we are in display right now, so go back. And again, we are in the main settings menu right now. From here, go to advanced features. 
Then from here, go to Motions and Gestures. And from this menu, toggle on Keep Screen On While Viewing. Now basically this is going to use the front facing camera to detect your face. So as long as you're looking at it, the screen is going to stay on. So if you are doing lots of reading for example, this is definitely a nice feature to have. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A24 4G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.